So Bill Burns, how the devil are you? Very good. Jan, very good. Congratulations on your new gig. Oh, thank you very much. Um, so how has the pandemic been for you this past year? It's been a little bit difficult. You know, it's uh, Gail and I are uh, kind of hunkering down. Um, don't get out a lot, you know, pick up food from uh, Goaty White's or other local restaurants. Um, but, um, you know, have a little bit of a pod and the, the woods are still open. So been able to get out hiking more than probably I would have otherwise. And uh, I think that's one of the great advantages we have here in the mountains is that the woods are still open. Yes, that is a great quote. I'm going to quote you on that. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I have been out in the woods a lot, a lot. Because yeah, you know, I think it's it's been really a great release for us and uh, uh, who live in the country. And uh, uh, I can't imagine living in uh, an urban place where you know I have friends who have told me that just stepping out of the uh, apartment house puts them in danger. You know, there are so many people around. So you know, happy to be in the Catskills as I usually am. Yeah, we're lucky to be here. Mm -hmm. So what have you been working on? Have you been keeping yourself busy? I've been doing some writing. I've been doing some reading. Um, I've been watching a lot of documentaries. <laughs> um, but right now I'm working on an article on the anti-rent war. Uh, the Tri-County Historical Review is a wonderful little magazine published um, out of uh, Gilboa. And it covers uh, history of the Catskills. Um, I had an article in there not long ago uh, on John D. Clark, congressman from Delaware County, who uh, uh, was quite a, a major figure in uh, both the Republican Party, the state of New York, and, uh, and, um, and in forestry, in uh, taking care of the environment. And he was tragically killed in an automobile accident in 1933. Otherwise, we might be talking about uh, Governor John D. Clark, he was prominently mentioned as a candidate for uh, the governor's role. Would have been interesting had he run because he would have been running against Herbert Lehman, who had a home right here in the Catskill. So it would have been uh, one Catskill Mountain guy against another Catskill Mountain guy. But John D. Clark actually grew up in uh, Holbert and uh, graduated from Delaware Academy in Delhi. So he was a real Delaware County guy. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit more about that. Well, yeah. that, that, there's a podcast out now. People can look for that podcast uh, uh, where they get their podcasts. Uh, Silver Hollow Radio, Brett, Silver Hollow Audio, excuse me, Brett Barry runs a terrific operation, as you know, Jenny, up in, uh, in uh, Chichester. And he and I sat down and we, 12 feet apart, uh, uh, we sat down and, and uh, he mic'd me up and, and we spoke about uh, John D. Clark and people have watched the podcast have told me they enjoyed it. Right now I'm working on this, another article for the Tri-County Historical Review about the anti-rent war, which as many viewers know occurred here in uh, the Catskills in the 1840s and um, you know really led to a neighbor against neighbor and we're kind of divided these days uh, politically but imagine if uh, you had to decide uh, whether or not you wanted to tar and feather your neighbor for uh, being on the other side of a dispute with which both sides had an argument. The, uh, we all, I think today, like to think we'd be anti-renters because that's American democracy. Uh, but the fact of the matter is John Burroughs, the great naturalist, he was a little kid, eight years old when the anti-rent war hit Delaware County the hardest and his father, and mother owned their own land and the farm in Roxbury with Woodchuck Lodges. They felt that people had a moral obligation to pay their rent. And they actually, along with Jay Gould's father, interestingly enough, built a second schoolhouse so that their children would not have to go to school with the anti-renter children. So, you know, I don't think we've gotten that far in, in the division in America today where we're taking our kids out of school because the, uh, their parents might disagree with us politically. Mm. So that's, uh, that's, uh, some of what I've been doing and um, um, looking forward to getting that anti-rent war article finished and sent off to uh, uh, the uh, Tri-County Historical Review in the next week or so. Where can uh, people buy the Tri-County Historical Review? I, I would Google it. I'd look it up online and I'm sure there's an online presence. Uh, a subscription is something like 10 or $15, pretty uh, pretty cheap. Two two issues a year. The issue, I should have one with me. The issues are nice little uh, book size 
uh, magazine, sort of like the old Reader's Digest. Some of uh, the older viewers will remember the Reader's Digest, that kind of size. And, uh, you know, some really interesting articles. John Dudas had a great article in there about the history of Fleischmann's. And uh, there's been a lot of stuff that I think people would find interesting locally. Mm. There is a lot of really great writing about the Catskills, especially now, I feel. What, what are you reading? What have you been reading this past year? Oh, right now I'm reading the new biography of Malcolm X, which has nothing to do with the uh, Catskills, but it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Because it, uh, a lot of people have read the autobiography of Malcolm X, which he uh, wrote with, his, uh, with Alex Haley, the guy who became famous for Roots. And that was more of a political... Um, it was more of a political edge to that, whereas this uh, really tells more of his family life as a child and, and where he got his uh, strong set of beliefs uh, uh, before he even became a, a Muslim. So, uh, but I think the best book on the Catskills, I like to advertise it, is uh, one that was published in 2008, mm -hmm. uh, written by a fellow named uh, David Stradling. He's a, uh, uh, a uh, professor at uh, University of Cincinnati, I believe. He, he went to Colgate University, uh, grew up in Long Island, so he drove through the Catskills when he was a college guy to get to Colgate. But more importantly, his father was an Ingram, and that's a local name, the Ingram family. And uh, his father had, had uh, uh, excuse me, this was his grandfather, I'm sorry. And his grandfather was a, worked for the post office in Kingston, and every time the straddling kids would come up to Kingston to visit their grandparents, uh, Mr. Ingram would take him up into the Catskills. So he developed kind of a fascination with the area so many of us have. He was educated as an environmental uh, historian, and probably telling you more than you want to know. And um, he did his first book on Cleveland. You may remember when the, uh, you don't remember, you're too young probably, but at one point the Cuyahoga River was on fire in Cleveland. That's how polluted it was. The river actually burned. There was so much gasoline and other uh, pollutants in the water. And so he started going on environmental history of Cleveland. And then when it was time to do his second book, he decided to look at the Catskills. And he came up with a great, um, um, he calls it The Making of Mountains by David Stradling. And in it, he talks about how the mountains were he are here. They were created by uh, God or erosion or, you know, they were created. And um, uh, but what we make of them, what we human beings think about the mountains, how we view the mountains, that's a cultural thing and it changes over time. So that at one point people came to the mountains because there were so many people who had died during the Civil War. The mountains were kind of a way to return to, to find a connection to nature spiritually. Uh, there was another time when people would come to the mountains because getting fresh milk in the cities was difficult. So you could come up just to make sure that you had good fresh milk and eggs. Today, I think, so many people have rediscovered the Catskills and they're coming up because the woods are open. There's a lot of uh, uh, people are coming up looking to hike, even hiring guides to take them. And people are looking for local food. That's another big part of it. Yes. And Stradling's thesis is that people will come to the mountains looking for whatever they're looking for. And those of us who make our lives in the mountains will provide it for them in exchange for the Yankee dollar. <laughs> yes, that's really why I moved here because I really wanted good food. I'd I was living in New York City for many years, and I just I I just felt I couldn't get good food. So, you know, it's you know either exactly. pay, the, pay the doctor or pay the farmer. You know exactly. those exactly. When I moved here, I came. Twenty twenty one is my fiftieth year as a Catskill Mountain guy, and um, when I came to Delaware County, there were more cows than people. And I don't know how well you know cows, but they are very nice. <laughs> cows are lovely, lovely. Very nice. So more cows than people made it a lovely place to live. <laughs> okay. So what had you been working on uh, before the pandemic that you might have had to stop? You know, like I was going to do an article. My, my plan was to do an article. Uh, I've always loved Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, I was. Um, I wasn't born when he was president, but um, I was born three years after he died. And uh, uh, I've always loved Hyde Park, but I've always, I wonder what was Roosevelt's connection with the Catskills? Because, you know, when I was teaching, I would remind the kids often that, uh, you know, we do have some neighbor presidents, you know, uh, uh, Martin Van Buren is right across the river. 
his home. Uh, he was from Kinderhook, so he was an upstate New York guy, just as we are. And Franklin Roosevelt, of course, Hyde Park is just across the river. So I wanted to research Roosevelt, both Roosevelt, Eleanor and Franklin, and their uh, how much time they spent in the Catskills. I found a little article years ago that I have framed out of the Walton Reporter, I believe it was, from the, you know, where people do the, what was in the news, you know, 100 years ago. So it must have been from 2012. Because in 1912, Franklin Roosevelt was in Hancock as a state senator campaigning for the Wilson uh, election. It was the famous election where Teddy Roosevelt William Howard Taft, the incumbent president, and Woodrow Wilson were all running as three candidates against each other. And uh, uh, Roosevelt came to Hancock to campaign for Wilson. So I wanted to look into what else he was in the Catskills. So I registered as a researcher at the uh, FDR library in Hyde Park, which was a little thrill for me, but I never was able to get back to do the research because COVID shut down the library and I think it remains shut. So I hope to do that uh, article uh, later. One thing I did discover, though, I, did, I was involved in local politics, regional politics for uh, quite some time. And I always, whatever candidates I was working with, I would always say to them, the last day of the campaign, on elect, the day before election day, you should be walking around your own neighborhood, asking your own friends and neighbors to vote for you. Don't assume that they're going to vote for you just because you live uh, down the street. Yeah. And Franklin Roosevelt's every uh, presidential election that he was in or the gubernatorial elections he was in or for vice president, he would uh, take a trip that would take him uh, from his home in Hyde Park to Kingston and then down to uh, uh, Poughkeepsie. And he'd make that circle of all the towns in both his county, Dutchess County and Ulster County across the river to kind of make sure that the neighbors were going to be there for him. I'm not sure they ever were. It was a highly Republican area. I'm not sure that Franklin Roosevelt ever carried the cats. I know he didn't. Funny story uh, in New Kingston, where I lived for many, many years, uh, there was a Democratic committeeman named Frank Russell, one of my great friends. Uh, Frank was born in 1892, uh, maybe, and uh, died in uh, 1983, something like that. Well, he was a Democratic committeeman, and uh, in all of New Kingston, there were only two votes for Franklin Roosevelt, probably 75, 80, 100 votes, only two of them for Franklin Roosevelt uh, was something that I found out kind of interesting. Yeah. So what the last question before we go, what have you, what, hey, what plans do you have for 2021? Well, uh, get vaccinated. That's plan number one. I've registered with the, uh, with the hospital, our local hospital is taking registration of people who are eligible uh, so that when the vaccine comes in, they can get it. Um, certainly, you know, checking with CVS when they get their vaccine. There are, as we know, state sites. A couple of my friends have been able to make appointments in Binghamton or Albany, but they're months off and, uh, and uh, uh, not taking any more appointments because as you know, we don't have enough vaccine. So I think the big thing for Gayla, my wife and myself are, let's get through this pandemic, It'd be a heck of a thing to get sick when uh, things coming to an end with vaccines out there. So that's the big thing is get vaccinated, get through this pandemic. And then I'd like to, you know, see my kids and my grandkids and, and you know, get out of town for a bit. We haven't been out of town uh, we had a vacation planned last summer that we canceled because of COVID. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it'd be nice to be able to uh, move around again. Yeah. Well, that's my plan for 2021. Let's get <laughs> out of this thing. Yes. Well, Bill Burns, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much, Jen. And good luck with uh, the program. Thank you.